I want to welcome you back into the 11th hour now. That song that Robin was singing, she got that song uh, way before all these things in the news transpired, everything that's happened over the last couple of days, shaking and rising. And there is a shaking. You saw that happen in Florida. And now there's a rising. And, you know, I was going up to um, Arizona to Window Rock with the team, and uh, we were up there. It was a was a powerful, powerful meeting. It was a wonderful meeting, and a lot was done in the spirit. And uh, this is what I heard. I heard um, on August, it was August 4th, 2022, says, the Lord said to me, if we do not act now, we will lose. That was solemn words to me. If we do not act now, we will lose. Now, this morning, the Lord began to talk to me about all the events that took place, about how the president's house was, you know, thinking on all of that, how it was raided and all this kind of stuff. Just, just mess. And this is what, I wrote this morning that he inspired me and said, write this down. And I want you to listen real close to this. When I look at tyrannical leaders of this great nation today, I wonder what people like George Washington would have done about it if he had been alive today. The highest positions in our great land has become the playgrounds of whores and tyrants. It is filled with leaders that have prostituted themselves for money and power to live a cushy life. And the trade they made enables very wicked men to bring about a very wicked agenda. Spiritually, we are paralleled to the, the war of independence. You know, I, uh, I remember when all that big controversy about January 6th and all that happened in uh, uh, 6th of January, 2021. And, um, you know, I remember I was up there and um, along with, I guess, a million people, I don't know. But I remember standing there and I'm just observing, just standing, looking at it and and looking at all kinds of things, standing like other people, you're just staring at this mess. And all at once, up through the crowd comes this drummer, and he's beating a drum, a cadence, and he's walking up through the middle of the crowd with his cadence going. But the thing that made him different is he was dressed in colonial uh 1775 garb he had that whole uniform on playing a cadence and the lord spoke to me prophetically and he said this is the parallel time you're in see this was a parallel time it's the only thing you can compare it to and so we've seen that play out over and over but this time it's affecting the world the whole world of course it would have affected it then also but i want you to to uh Listen to this. Since you know you're in that kind of parallel time, the Lord went on this morning to have me write this. He says, we are, uh, spiritually, we are paralleled in 1781. When it seemed all was lost, General Cornwallis had, uh, and had taken Charleston, South Carolina. Henry Clinton, his superior, had finally or had firmly taken New York City. George Washington wrote in a letter these words, We are at the end of our tether. Now, when the Lord spoke to me that if we don't act now, we will lose, there's never been such a time uh, a blatant time where wicked leaders openly play God with you and the lives of your children and your grandchildren. They are playing a game of chess with the lives of our children, just like Faust and the painting of the chess game with the devil. 
The enigma of that game seemed unsolvable in that painting. When it looked in the painting as if Faust was in checkmate, until a ray of light from heaven showed a chess master that the king had one more move. Chuck Schumer, Pelosi, and all the others now have seemingly control of the board. But the king has one more move. And I want you to listen to this in Isaiah 63. And we're going to read verses 1 through 6. It says, Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger, and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. When they raided the president's home, and they blatantly stand out and do the things they're doing before midterms and so forth, this is, what, this is the door they opened. This was what they triggered. Why, oh why, why do you wicked leaders not accept mercy when God extends it to you? He extends it to you and your children, but you're so deep in the mire and you're so deep in the quagmire of your own sin and you're so deep in the overthrow of a world and to bring about an antichrist that you can't function you can't back up. You have to push it on over the edge. Well, you pushed it this time. You don't realize what you've done. You have triggered the key. This was it. Chapter 63 of Isaiah. When the Lord comes with his garments dyed red in the blood of his enemies. And he comes trampling through. This is it. When there was no one with him, he said so I came alone. I trod the wine press alone. He, God, is about to take his mighty arm and wipe this chessboard clean and declare game over. Schumer, Pelosi, and Barack Obama, who thinks that they run, who thinks that he runs seven nations from a basement. That they have already, they don't realize they have already been weighed in the balance and found wanting. For as he marches, his foot will come down in every basement, upon every bed. And it will begin in the Ukraine. For you will see a new set of leaders. There are two lions present. And one will die from Samson's strength, and one will roar with righteousness. You had two, O oh America, and now you will have a third. A third? Yes, a third. A second lion, and a third time to roar from the second. I speak in a mystery, yes, for I am not afraid, says the Lord, even though denominations are. For I brought forth the word of faith and the prophetic for this very time to win. And you in both, and you from the outside of both, seek to denominize both of those. Well, this is the time I separate the two and leave the third to energize, uh, to emerge from both. Get out of my way, says the Lord. Now I have warned you, behold, my march begins, says the Lord. Now that's what I heard this morning. And he spoke in a mystery. 
And he spoke about two lions. And he spoke about two and a third and so forth. And this mystery is a great mystery that's about to unfold. And you're about to see it. But know this, Isaiah 63 verses 1 through 6 have now started. It has now begun. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Verse 5 of Isaiah 63. And I looked and there was none to help and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore mine own arm, mine own arm brought salvation unto me and my fury it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury and I will bring down their strength to the earth. This is where we've entered into. This is where we've entered into. Isaiah 63, verses 1 through 6. You challenged the Almighty. He extended his hand of mercy. You ignored it. You keep thinking. Why do you ignore his mercy? Because you think you are God. Why can you not hear his mercy? Why can you not hear his righteousness? Why don't you want his righteousness? Because you are drunk on power. You are drunk. You reel like a drunken man. You're drunk on power. This power has made make you like a drunk man, an intoxicated and inebriated individual, and you just reel and laugh at God while your glazed over red eyes think that you can destroy a covenant God made with forefathers of a nation that only started the nation because we love Jesus Christ. And now you seek to step in and say, God is not real, uh, you are God, uh, that Jesus is fake news. You seek to step in and say all of these things and you would dare says the Lord invade my anointed leader for this nation and you have pretended as long as you're going to be able to pretend for now confusion will set in in your camp and you will babble like the drunken fools you are now that's what I heard the Lord say people say well brother Robin that could just get you in all kinds of trouble I'm you know what People are already staring. If they will invade the rightful leader's home, do you think you're safe? This thing is a, is a global agenda. But I heard the word of the Lord, and they said you have, he said, you have triggered Isaiah chapter 63, verses 1 through 6. So be ready for that. Be ready now. And see if you can defend that against that. For you have never seen until you have pried the last finger of God off your shoulder for protection. And he removes his hands and the demons you work with will absolutely rip you apart. You've never seen anything like that. Behold, the march from Bozrah begins. Behold. The march from Edom begins with dyed garments of Bozrah. Hallelujah. With dyed garments from Bozrah. This is what's happening now. Hallelujah. Well, we did the 11th hour a little bit different today because I wanted to bring something to you just a little bit different in the way it was, it was carried out. See, what happens is, is people do not uh, recognize the supernatural. They don't know they're in a supernatural time. They don't realize it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See, wicked men have not faith, the scripture says. Wicked men don't have faith. So they cannot recognize the supernatural when they see it. Yes, I will, Lord. And the Lord said to tell you this, all you Judases that are in the camps of the saints, you beware, for you have touched my people and my anointed, and you sought to do my prophets harm. And now take heed what happened to the other Judas. From the serpent to the Judas, both were Judases to two 
Adams. Hallelujah. So anyway, people don't realize when they meet the supernatural, they don't understand it. Let me give you something so that you recognize it really well. The supernatural and the prophetic, it's just you can't separate them because the prophetic walks in tomorrow in the future and recognizes the puzzle pieces today. See, when Timothy Dixon and I went to D.C. and stood in front of the Supreme Court building and we held our staffs up, you can go back and watch that and maybe we can show you more about that later, but held up our staffs, you can hear, if you listen close, uh, if you can hear the raw footage, where I said, send down the fire, Lord. Send down the fire. And then I said, send down revival fire. And so we're standing there. The two giant scrolls are rolled out with the, that represents the unborn, and the blood of the unborn was crying from the ground. And it was the, the Elijah moment the Lord had told me. He said, when all this began, he said, there will be a Red Sea time and an Elijah moment. And that was the Elijah moment. And so we're calling for fire to come down. All right. After that, you know about it. Facebook fell that day, and it fell and lost billions of dollars. And then they rebranded themselves as dead, meta. And then after this, but watch what happened. Then a fiery portal formed over the White House. Wasn't long after that. And I kept telling you it was a fight over a portal, just like Elijah and the prophets of Baal. But see, God is not dealing with one mountain now, with one Carmel. He's dealing with the whole world as a mountain. So you, you've got to look at it globally. So that day we call for fire. I call for fire to come down that day. All right, after that, you see uh, then Roe v. Wade was reversed. You saw that. Okay. But then, watch this now, in Birmingham, England, I think around July 28th or 29th, when they started doing the Commonwealth thing, they marched a giant bull with 50 women. And this giant bull came out, this red-eyed Baal. It was Baal. And they marched him out onto the, to the grounds there while the people cheered. And it looked like there, and there was uh, 50 women, I think, standing behind him, all dressed alike, just like prophets of Baal. And then the people all, were almost worshiping the bull, this Baal. And one woman stood with her hand up like she was going to touch his nose as he knelt down and lo lowered his head to her hand while he breathed smoke out of his nose. Well, that same bull is mentioned in Revelation when, it's, when Jesus said, my faithful martyr Antipas was offered on the throne of Satan. And they would take a bull and they had a trap door in its belly and they stuffed the man up in it, tied their hands behind their back, built a fire under the belly of the bull. And since it was hollow, smoke would come out of his nose and it would sound out of his horns and it would sound like the bull was coming alive. It's all has to do with Baal worship. And they marched it out on the field in Birmingham, England. Well, I'm not far from Birmingham, Alabama. And then to put, start putting pieces together. This would have been, uh, Timothy wanted me to go with him that day after he had had the dream. So we go up there and we're there and we call down the fire. Now they do this on the 28th or 29th, whatever date it was, you can look it up, about this and when they brought Baal out. Well, when they brought Baal out, now watch this. They were going to dismantle it after the ceremony, which it was more than a ceremony. It was a ritual. And they were going to dismantle this bull, but there was an outcry to not dismantle the bull. Now listen close. And it was reported on August 5th that the bull would not be dismantled. And on August 5th in the park in front of the White House, lightning came flying down out of that portal and struck the ground, just like with the prophets of Baal. And 
fire fell. People say, my God, man, did that happen? Yes, it happened. It was reported, I think it happened on August 5th, and they decided on August 5th to leave Baal intact. And fire fell. We have entered biblical times, supernatural times like nobody's ever seen. And people, and, and, and you've got denominations just sipping their tea and Christians that are hiding over in the corner. They don't want to get involved. And we're absolutely in a parallel time like we've never seen before. In the natural, the independence days of 1775 and up. And in the spirit, the time of Elijah, the Elijah moments. And so all of this is happening at one time. Now, it not only showed you the supernatural tying together, but it also showed you the two nations that are leading it. America, where the fire fell, and England, where Baal stands. Does it surprise you that it was in England? They put up the Arch of Baal. They were one of the first ones when Boris Johnson dedicated the Arch of Baal. And then they marched the bull out. Is that a a coincidence? No. Is it a coincidence that there's one sitting in New York, a bull just like it? No. And that bull faces down a child. Have you ever noticed that? So these things have come parallel. When they refused to do away with Baal, fire fell in front of the White House. You can't write that off. And so it shows you the two nations leading all of this. Watch this. Are you ready? It's the two nations of the eagle and the lion. The eagle and the lion. Some of you that have been following this prophetic flow from the 11th hour understand the eagle and the lion. And the Lord talks about here two lions. Isn't that something? Well, I wanted you to see that because we're in a very supernatural time. Very supernatural And you need to understand the prophetic. People don't recognize the prophetic, and surely people in Washington don't recognize the prophetic. They don't recognize it at all. They don't recognize the supernatural. They think they are God. How can you recognize God when you think you are God? You do realize that suddenly with all this is going on, You've got men like Klaus Schwab saying, we know better than you know. This is basically what he's saying, and we can make all your lives better. And you've got his prophet, Noah Harari, that some think is the Antichrist, but he's not. He's, not. he's, the, he's the false uh, image of the false prophet if he's going to be anything. And so there you have, uh, you have him saying things like this in 2020. They agreed, men agreed to be surveyed under the skin. And then he said uh, not long ago, he said, all God of the Bible, all God managed to create. Notice he didn't say there wasn't one. He said all God managed to create was organic life, trees, giraffes, and humans. He said, but we're going to go beyond the God of the Bible and merge organic with machine, organic with technology. And he said, we're going to make a cyborg, so to speak. Do you think of that? And then everybody getting these, and they don't even know what's in it, but magnets stick to it and things like that. And you wonder what's going on. And then they give you things like 5G. And I remember when they came out, nobody installing it could even tell you what it was for. And then it finally was revealed it was so machines could talk to each other. Folks, if you think you're not in biblical times, you need to come out of the tea-sipping camp and walk out here where the war's happening. And now we're looking at all of this, and we're in a fight to win. We either move now or we lose. You've got to start. You want to, you really want to change something. Quit screaming for the Democrats to be pulled out of office and start screaming for people like Chuck, uh, 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 Mitch McConnell and, and, uh, 
people like that to be pulled out of office. Lindsey Graham, won't you start screaming for that? Start yelling for that and replace them with godly people. Replace them with somebody who, when they walk into Washington, won't become demonized by the spirit of Baal that resides over the Capitol right now. So we have to begin to, we need to recognize where we are, recognize what's going on. Hallelujah. There is a major move for revival in this nation like you've never seen and around the world. And it's, it's a worldwide revival this time, and it's going to happen. I mean, it's going to take place because here, when they did what they did, is it not obvious what they did in Florida? I mean, it's got to be obvious to people. But we've got to get our head out of the sand. Like when the guy in Germany, the pastor, he said, they came after this camp, and I wasn't, I didn't do anything because I'm not one of them. Then they came after these. I didn't do anything because I'm not one of them. Then they came after the Jews, and I didn't do anything because I'm not a Jew. And then they came after me, and he said, there was no one to help me. They're not going to stop. Now they're throwing up things. You need to recognize supernatural prophetic events. <clears throat> now, Isaiah 63, verse 1 through 6 has been triggered. Let me read it one more time, and then we'll, we'll close the teaching on this. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. That's our God about to invade I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save, he says. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, he's asked, and thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. Why do you look like your garments have grape juice splattered all over them? He says, I have trodden the wine press alone. And of the people that there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart. They triggered that day when they made this move. And the year, this is the year of my redeemed is come. So God has said it. He said it. He was waiting a day to trigger it. And it triggered it. And he said, this is the year of my redeemed is come. And he looked around to see if there was any man to help, and there was none to help. And I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, mine own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury, it upheld me. And I will tread down the people, he's talking about the wicked, in mine anger and make them drunk in my fury. And I will bring down their strength to the earth. He's going to show you that all these men, so-called prophets, so-called, I'm talking about people like Harari and people like that. He's, he's going to show you they're of the earth. They are not supernatural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been a good 11th hour, a heavy 11th hour today. And it was done a little different today. The song, Shaking and Rising, Shaking and Rising. And then the teaching on this. It is about to begin now. And you're going to see it in the spirit. Look at it. I'm speaking of something very big spiritually that's about to happen. There's a war in the heavens going on right now. And there was a major war won in Arizona just the other day in the heavens in the spirit. When all the, the tribal nations gathered and the authority of what they own and who they are, something has changed. And this was their last ditch effort. And while they stand up and Chuck Schumer stands and grins and smiles at all that they've been able to do, they're drunk. And a drunken man 
says, hey, you can hit me and it don't hurt me. It don't hurt me. They've been drunk a long time. And they're paying off trained elephants to give us an illusion of this freedom. But there are some rogue elephants. And there are some real people left. And you're about to see how God what happens when God comes tra treading the ground and his foot steps in every basement, steps on every bed, steps in every room, on every capital of every nation around the world? You think there's not a God? Wicked men, look up and watch. Watch and see if there's not one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Time is not measured in God's mind like you measure time. You measure time from election to election, from day to day, from vote to vote. You, that's the way you measure time. From the ebb and fall of money and finances and people sold their own unborn and killed their own posterity for money where they thought there would be more money and the only ones that made the money was the ones who killed the children and sold their body parts. Men measure time according to their greed and vanity. One day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day with God. But in it is a great mystery. And there always comes a time within that period of God's time when a day triggers an event. A day triggers an event. In the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And Noah, they were marrying and giving in marriage. They were just continuing their life every day like normal, like there was no God, like nothing was going to change. And it said, in the same day, the flood took them away. It can happen suddenly, and things are about to change suddenly, for God will not be denied this revival, and his church will not be denied the revival. There will be righteousness one more time. There will be righteousness running this nation one more time, and this nation will affect all nations. I want all the nations listening to know this is not the way the United States is treating you and the way our, our law enforcement's acting in the highest all, uh, in the land, the way they're acting is not the way it was founded. That's not the way this nation was, uh, was designed to be. It's not the way our founding fathers did. We were founded to end slavery, and in slavery we did. And now they're trying to institute it again. And I want you to pray for America because as it goes, so will go the world. And you're looking at these things, and you're looking at the way it's happening right now. That's not the way it was intended to be. And it will return to the original covenant made with the forefathers. And you will enjoy revival. And all the prosperity that goes with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think it was, maybe I'm wrong, but I think it was Bob Jones that prophesied there would be a billion souls saved. And then later, oh, way later than that, on something, I, I was standing on a stage and heard on the 11th hour, I think it was, and I heard the Lord say there would be a billion souls come into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Well, I, get, I could go on and on. But I want you to know that I, I'm very honored and privileged to get to speak to you from the 11th hour today. And um, I want you to realize that this thing is not over. Go back and listen to this again and listen to the prophetic word the Lord read. Amen. Be looking for some special things to come up. Amen. We're going to be doing some, something different all in different places. Pray for us. Pray for me as I speak. Pray for us that we're kept safe and the Lord will honor your prayer because you are our partners. Hallelujah. Now, if you'd like to give today, I want you to uh, know that there's several ways to give. They'll put it on the screen so you can see it. And you can, uh, if the Lord leads you to, uh, then I want you to know that as you give, Luke 6, 38 says, it shall be given to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. 
That's giving one time, receiving seven times. God is not in, in, inhibited by this inflated economy right now that they're, they're, they're faking and masking around the world. There's still plenty. Look around and see if you see any worried birds or squirrels or animals. They know there's plenty. Hallelujah. This is not the tribulation. Now, this is the impressions of it to come. They're trying to push it into being. So God has a way of prospering you. The tithe, you don't want to miss tithing. Because, see, if tithing is done away with, then the devourer is loosed upon the people. That's why the enemy tries to talk the church into not tithing. But the tithe offers a very prosperous thing. It says, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, that he not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before its time in the field. And all nations shall call you blessed. For you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. The word host there is the word for the organized armies of heaven. So God unleashes an angelic host to fight for those who tithe because it's the, it's the faith they're showing in the tithe. They're connecting the natural to the supernatural, and it rebukes the devourer for their sake. It allows God to say, they've tied theirs to mine, and now we're in covenant, and I can speak for them concerning this kind of thing. And he rebukes the devourer, and the Lord rebukes the devourer for our sake. May he not destroy the fruits of our ground. Hallelujah. And everything works in perfect timing. And there's an angelic host, an army of heaven that are sent forth to fight, to see to it that it comes to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just hold it up and thank God if you're a tither that the devourers rebuke for your sake. If you're giving offerings, thank God that it's given to you seven times back and that hey, you trust and believe and just begin to bless him and thank him. Hallelujah, that he's made a way for you to prosper when men have determined to break you. Amen. Now, um, if you don't know Jesus as the Lord of your life, there's only one time, one place to do it, and that's right now. <laughs> Today is the day of salvation. Right now, the greatest thing on the planet you could do that will affect your whole eternity is make him your Lord and Savior. Paul said, if you believe in your heart, God raised Jesus from the dead. Confess with your mouth that he is your Lord. You shall be saved. So just say this out loud. Lord Jesus, I believe in my heart God raised you from the dead. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. Come into my life and change it and do something with it. Cleanse me from unrighteousness. And from this day forward, I'm your child. Hallelujah. And you want to say, forgive me of my sin. He will, just like that. Amen. Don't stop there. Ask him to baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Say, baptize me in the Holy Ghost and fire, Lord, so that I can speak in other tongues as the Spirit tells me what to say, and I can pray the mysteries in God. And just start doing that. And then thank him for it, and then just start saying those sounds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you've done that and you've made him the Lord of your life, go to my website, robindbullock.com, and download the book, Jesus, Why It Is the Way It Is. If you can't download it, write to us at P.O. Box 60, no, yeah, 67, Warrior, Alabama, a 35180, and, and we'll send it to you free. It won't cost you anything. I don't care where you are in the world. If it can be mailed to you, we'll send it to you. That's P.O. Box 67, Warrior, Alabama, 35180. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, it's been a joy to be with you on the 11th hour today. Some heavy things were said. This is kind of done differently today. It needed to be. I can explain later. I want all my partners to stay with me and know that we are here and we're not going away. And I, we're going to keep proclaiming and speaking the truth, thus saith 
the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, until next time we gather together right here around God's Word, I want you to remember, never forget that God is absolutely good. Shalom. Shalom.